and other departments of our university as well as other universities academicians researchers industry experts business consultants precious students and other distinguished guests from across the country starting from kashmir punjab himachal pradesh delhi and uttar pradesh in the north to chennai pondicherry andhra pradesh in the south from arunachal pradesh assam bengal orissa in the east to rajasthan in the west on behalf of the department of business administration university of lucknow and lucknow management association and on my personal behalf i accord a very warm welcome to each one of you to the national e seminar self reliance in the changing global environment imperative for india make in india initiative followed by a call for self reliance by our honorable prime minister has generated tremendous interest as the idea is not to become an isolationist nation but to ensure that our country gets up to play an important role in global supply chain covid-19 has caused companies across the world to look at other options to reduce their dependency on china which plays a very important role in global supply chain this changing global environment presents huge opportunity to india to strengthen its industry including msmes further the escalating geopolitical relationship between india and china has led to call for boycott of chinese products with various chinese apps getting banned by the indian government today's seminar has been organized against this backdrop to understand what steps should be taken by different stakeholders to not only make our country self reliant but also for it to become an important player in the global supply chain now i invite mr sanjay medhavi head department of business administration to formally welcome the guests professor medhavi over to you uh, uh ritu uh, yes. unmute mr uh, navneet sagal he is already there we will unmute him uh, shortly okay uh uh professor Ma uh, mathurji uh, by what name has he registered because uh, i am not able to lo locate him who navneet sagal ji oh, he 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 said that he is already online no but he, his name is not visible he might have registered by a different name no no okay uh but uh, he says he can see us he can see us but uh, let us know by what name he has registered mr vidhavi i will take care of it and i yeah. request you to kindly formally welcome the guests thank yeah. you so uh on behalf of the department of business administration i like to extend my thanks to the lucknow management association for associating uh, us and uh, uh, deliver uh, helping us in deliberation of this such an important uh, uh, issue today Uh, we uh, i welcome all the guests uh, of today uh, uh, mr subhash tripathi uh, who is from the uh, startup ecosystem system mr ved krishna uh, who is a successful entrepreneur and dr navneet sahgal uh, who is leading the government's uh, uh, all the commercial initiatives today in the up uh, now today if we look at this scenario today there are two perspectives the short term perspective and the long term perspective today most of the people are focusing on the short term perspective that we should boycott chinese products we should uh, uh, focus on uh, make in india because focus on uh, what we call swadeshi but what is happening is these short term measures are actually short term we have to look at the long term supply chain system for example even if an indian car manufacturer like tata motors or uh, mahindra and mahindra they are uh, sourcing 5 to 10% of their electronic or some uh, components from china and they say okay we will not be importing from china what will happen if that 5% of the components don't come the entire value chain gets disrupted and they are not able to manufacture and sell vehicles 
so just uh, going and saying that the government should uh, uh, immediately ban imports from china and we all should uh, stop buying from china is not a practical solution the practical solution is we have to slowly identify that what are the areas in which india is lacking where we do not have uh, the uh, home grown supply system uh, or a supply system other than uh, china from our uh, some of our friendly countries and then wherever these gaps are there we have to focus on developing those uh, vendors developing the supply chain developing the uh, industry now that is the long term perspective what we are going to deliberate on today uh, how we are go going to go about planning how the government is going to provide the infrastructure facilities and the entire system in which these new companies will flourish how the existing companies can expand government has already done one thing it has expanded the definition of the small and medium scale sector so that the companies have now a leeway to grow uh, the companies can start manufacturing uh, uh, other uh, related products which they have not been manufacturing for example you see a very good sign today that when the covid started india was not manufacturing even a single ventilator india was not manufacturing ppe kits but what has happened the indian manufacturers have taken this as a challenge today india is an exporter of ppe kits and india is manufacturing its uh, own uh, ventilators systems now this is the type of system we will require all industries all business enterprise in india will have to see what are the gaps which are not being filled by local manufacturers local suppliers and where Uh, the local uh, suppliers have to come up local vendors have to come up and it is now a duty of not only the government but also the bigger companies to facilitate and handhold small vendors so that they can increase uh, start manufacturing these components and then also start manufacturing of what we call the world uh, level quality and skill so within this background we will have the two days deliberations and i feel the two days deliberations will be quite useful to both the industries uh, who are uh, in up and who are trying to enter and establish their ventures in up as well as the up government in formulating their future policies on how to handhold and how to promote the growth of industrial sector in uttar pradesh so over to ritu thank you so much for such a warm welcome we have professor shukla ex dean faculty of commerce amit sir i request professor sk shukla to please encourage us with his kind words over to you sir i'm uh, sorry uh, i think uh, due to some connectivity issues professor shukla uh, is not with us right now okay. so okay. we might be able to connect with him later so please continue i know this is one of the challenges that we face in conducting a webinar so moving over uh, let me just share you know before we continue further that we close the public chat box uh, just to ensure a smooth running of the proceedings uh, however if any one of you have any questions for our speakers or any query then please send it to us on personal chat which is open or you could email it to us at lumbaconference@gmail.com so we have all our speakers with us and we will have the question and answer session after all the speakers have expressed their thoughts now i invite mr ak mathur vice president lma to please introduce our galaxy of speakers over to you uh, mr mathur thank, thank you ritu uh, good good afternoon ladies and gentlemen i am ak mathur from lucknow management association LMA, as some of you must be knowing, is the top-rated affiliate of IMA, the apex management body of the country. LMA is co-hosting this event with the Department of Business Administration, University of Lucknow, and I have great pleasure in introducing the three eminent speakers of uh, this webinar. The first is uh, Mr. Subhash Tripathi. uh he is the ceo of a startup infobase which provides material on startups which helps students to set up their own startups he is also ceo of theta monitor 
which provides research and insights into global firms on their customers, prospects, vendors, targets, industry, and innovation. Uh, the third hat Mr. Tripathi wears is of investment director of Marwari Engine Network, which is a network of over 100 angel investors, which invites the startups for funding. He has rich experience in venture investment management, marketing, marketing intelligence and strategy, and financial research and advisory. Mr. Tripathi is based out of Hyderabad. Our second speaker is Mr. Ved Krishna. He is a BA honors from London, London Metropolitan University. Am, am I audible? Can you hear me? Yes, yes you are audible. Please continue. Yes, you are audible. You are uh, audible. Uh, he, he is a BA honors from London Metropolitan University. MS in Biomimicry from Arizona State University, USA, and did Advanced Management Program from Indian School of Business, Hyderabad. Ved Krishna joined his father's company, Yash Paper, and held several key positions as Business Head, Managing Director, and Strategy Head of what is now a world-class packaging unit with markets in countries across the world. Ved is an avid nature lover and uses biomimicry, which is, what is biomimicry? It, it is relating nature with technology. Uh, in his uh, multifarious products, he is relating uh, technology with nature. Another interesting fact is that he does not have a power connection in his factory. And he produces all his power requirements from renew renewable sources. <coughs> we would have loved to learn from him more about biomimicry. But today, he'll be speaking on a more mundane theme, building upon natural competitiveness. Dr. Navneet Segal is our third speaker. He is an IS officer of UP Carter 1988 batch and is currently additional chief secretary holding the charge of MSME, export promotion, and Khadi Gramudyog. He is also uh, the president of Lucknow Management Association. Dr. Segal uh, has held a large number of key positions in the state government during his illustrious tenure. I will mention only a few because of the time constraint. He was chairman of State Urban Development Agency and secretary Urban Poverty Alleviation for five years. Chairman and managing director of UP Power Corporation, chairman of UP Jalnigam, as chairman uh, and CEO of UP Expressway Industrial Development Authority, Mr. Segal is credited with rapid development of expressway network in Uttar Pradesh, notably Agra Lucknow Expressway and the record time of 22 months. Dr. Segal is a qualified chartered accountant, a company secretary, and holds a PhD. Thank you, Ritu. Ritu, back to you. Thank you, Mr. Mathur, for, for telling us about the speakers for the day. Startup India, Stand Up India to Self-Reliant India is what we are aiming at. What are the emerging trends in startups in the current ecosystem in India is what our first speaker, Mr. Subhash Tripathi, Head Global Sales and Investor Relations, will share with us. Mr. Tripathi has joined us from Hyderabad. Mr. Tripathi, over to you. Please unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you Ritu, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes. Perfect. Ma'am, can I also put my presentation, if that is possible? Can I share that? Absolutely. Absolutely.
Uh, I believe now uh, you can see my uh, presentation. Yes, we can. Great, awesome, awesome. So uh, without wasting time, uh, you, know, uh, you know, we'll move ahead. Uh, firstly, thanks a lot, Department of Business Administration, University of Lucknow, uh, LMA, and uh, Dr. Ritu ma'am for inviting me today uh, in this uh, uh, e-seminar. Uh, Mathur sir, thanks a lot for the kind introduction. And uh, yeah, and, and uh, you know, uh, 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 and such a nice gathering, you know, it's, it's been quite some time in last two, three months, we have been doing a lot of, you know, webinars, but, you know, having more than 100 participants is something which is really exciting. And I can see, you know, there are already more than 230 audience right now we have. So, and looking at the faces, sometime I feel that, you know, maybe most of you would know more than me. It's just that I'm taking a chance to share my experience, but probably I would also love to learn from all of you at some point of time. Uh, one second. Yeah, so, uh, so today's theme that I'm going to cover is emerging trend in startup and ecosystem. So I have been working in startup ecosystem for last uh, 10 years, uh, played various role, you know, uh, let it be, you know, investment into startup ecosystem through a VC fund. I have been attached to a couple of incubators. I'm a regular guest faculty at IIM Lucknow. And, uh, uh, and, and uh, lately I also started a angel network. Angel network would mean, you know, a network of HNIs, wealthy people who invest money into startup. And also I do my own entrepreneurial journey through two, two startups of my own. One is called Startup Infobase, which is more like an e-learning platform for anyone who wants to do a startup. It's a great database where you can learn the whole startup uh, life cycle. The second is, uh, you know, a Theta Monitor, which is more like a digital marketing agency and a research agency. Now, let's, let's start from the, the, the bigger theme that you have today, a self-reliance in the changing global environment, uh, you know, imperative for India. Now, if we start on this, you know, so right now, if you look at the world, you know, sometimes many of us, you know, feel that, you know, is it really a big deal to go to Mars, you know, and go to space or rather protect ourselves as a species? You know, we have this question because we spend billions of dollars, you know, reaching to space, going to moon. But right now, all the superpower all together, let it be US, Russia, India, many other countries like UK, France, no one is able to come up with a medicine vaccine for COVID. So, so good or bad, COVID did made us prioritize what is important for us in our life. So, so while they, we face, all of us are facing this problem of COVID, uh, you know, many of us will like, already agree that there is a lot of job loss. So in fact, yesterday I was having an interview with a Chennai-based candidate and this particular lady works in an ad in his ad agency and she was mentioning that she lost her job and in fact that ad agency got closed down and I was a little curious as to why would an ad agency close down I mean they can downsize they can probably have lesser work but then she told me that all of her customers were actually you know hotel industry and because hotel industry have come down they don't have any work and the company has closed down and believe me, so uh, I'm sure Lucknow is on a similar trend and North India is on a similar trend. But if we go down south, you know, let it be Chennai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, job losses are huge. You know, uh, many of us will not be able to account it how big is that, but it's huge. So one challenge that we face along with the COVID is that there are a lot of job losses happening. Now, the second thing is, you know, today, in fact, today, the Times of India carries an interesting, you know, data point saying, uh, you know, 50% of India, which is like, you know, we have, we, we are very proud to say we are almost 1.2 billion plus people and 50% of that is less than 25 years of age. And if I say, uh, you know, uh, 35 years and below, it's 60% of our population, which means that most of the India needs a job. Okay. Now, let me give you a couple of more data points. The average age of India if I calculate that is 29 years, China, the average age is 37 years, whereas Japan has average age of 48 years, which means if Japan is facing a job loss, they can still manage because a bigger chunk of their population is already done with their prime age of you know, working. 
or rather generating income. China almost is done, but India has just started. I mean, most of our population is in that job category. So when we are faced with one challenge of job loss, the second challenge where we have got population which needs a job. So there are two, on the two front, we have a lot of problems. Third front, let us talk about which Madam, man, uh, Madam mentioned very well, you know, China. So China, you know, you see that there is a lot of trouble coming from China. There, there is a, a trouble, but also there is an opportunity which is getting created over there. Uh, you know, so there are a lot of components, there are a lot of, you know, uh, uh, requirement which is coming up due to, you know, uh, uh, our, our trade relation with China. So, so I think at, at, at in this intersection of, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the working age problem, the, the opportunity getting with, uh, cre getting created with China and the job loss, somewhere we are in the middle and we have to leverage this situation in our favor. Which is also being termed as be termed as being self-reliant. You know, atm nirbhar hame banna hai at this point of time, and that is where I would pick up the startup theme. You know, so how do we manage this situation? See, if there are no job and most of the population needs a job, the only option that we are left up with is you know do a startup, do a livelihood of your own, rather create some jobs for others. So when it comes to doing a startup. Uh, you know, there are a lot of, you know, uh, things, a lot of aspect and we'll need a, we'll need a bigger session to actually cover it in entirety. But with today's 20 minutes that I have, I'll try to at least give a trailer of that, you know, what is there. So let me quickly come to a slide where we talk about what is a startup. So firstly, you know, many, many people will say, you know, okay, startup is something which is coming up, you know, it, it will take some time. But frankly, if you look around, most of us are actually surrounded with few of these companies, you know, so Shadi Karna Hai, you go to Bharat Matrimonial, you have to book a flight, you go to Goa Vivo, you have to book a cab, you take Ola, you have to stay in a hotel, you go to Oyo, you have to do shopping, you go to Mintra. You have to buy grocery, you go to Big Basket. You have to go for education, you go to Baiju. You have to go to a movie shop, a movie, you go to book my show. So tell me what is not, what is left out? I mean, most of your wallet share, most of your expenditure is actually being attended by startups. Now, the other question is, a lot of people ask me, you know, okay, big deal. I mean, startups, okay, a startup, hai, but how is it different? I mean, a company, a startup, mein kya difference hai? Uh, you know, so a lot of people say, you know, if we start a business, you know, th that's also a startup. But over here, let me clarify a couple of points, you know, just taking under five minutes, that what is a startup and how is it different from a traditional business? Because that is a key point where, you know, things are changing. So over here, if you look at the two pictures, on the left-hand side, we have a Marwadi shop, you know, so uh, uh, with, 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 a, with a shopkeeper over there. And, you know, on the right hand, we have uh, Shah Rukh Khan over there. So, so is it like Shah Rukh Khan doing advertisement for Big Basket, which does, you know, online delivery of grocery? Just because Shah Rukh is doing an ad, does it make it a startup? Not really. So there is fundamental difference be between a traditional shop and a startup. So first thing is innovation. Now, any new venture has to be innovative to be called startup. When you say innovative, it means if you look at big basket, you know, so they are delivering groceries online, but you see not just de delivering groceries, you're getting a lot of convenience. For example, if you go to a Kirana shop, you have to stand and really scan the whole shop to see what you want to buy. Whereas in the big basket, you just open the search bar, you type mango and, you know, all 10, 20 variety of mangoes are there. Second, Kirana shop, you have to follow their timings. Okay, in big basket, you can book it online, select the time slot when you want it to get delivered and it gets delivered. Third thing, if there is not, there is something missing in Kirana shop, what do you say? Bhaiya aayega to bata dena. Let me know or I'll come back and check it again. In big basket, you put a reminder, you get an email that, okay, whatever you were looking for, it wasn't there earlier, now it is there. So you see, there's a lot of element of innovation which has come up, okay? Now, how the delivery of your service is happening, that is the second factor which decides whether your venture is startup or not, and that is technology. 
वाई वी आर सो अपडेट अबाउट टेक्नोलॉजी आई मीन टेक्नोलॉजी है नहीं है उससे क्या फर्क पड़ेगा उससे फर्क पड़ेगा टेक्नोलॉजी इज एनेबलिंग लॉर्ड ऑफ न्यू थिंग्स लेट मी गिव यू एन अनदर एग्जाम्पल यू नो जस्ट फॉर अ मिनट और टू yesterday many of us might have read this news that uh, uh, a future group which is owned by mr kishore biyani is being sold to ril uh, reliance industries and they are in discussion now when i was doing my mba uh, you know 15 year back and uh, we used to read case studies about you know future group mr kishore biyani and what a business empire he has created and 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 all of us admire you know many of us want to be wanted at some point to be like kishore biyani now if you ask uh, today's generation you know what do you want to become you want to become kishore biyani or you want to become sanjeev bansal you know a lot of people will say sachin bansal so so why why sachin bansal and why not kishore biyani sir so the difference is see 15 year back when the transition was happening you know things were getting online if you look at the interviews uh, even kishore sir used to say that you know online is there but itna fark nahi padega you know we will still be doing great business online will be there but we will still do a better business than online 15 year ahead you see the situation what is happening i mean same so if i'll just quickly give you an example so to open so what are the kind of brands he owns he owns big bazaar he owns uh, pantaloons he owns a uh, lot of different uh, brands like you know brand factory so what happens is when he opens a shop over there he spends 20 crore okay for example and how many people is he catering say 10000 20000 families and people uh, you know staying in that area whereas if you talk about flipkart big bazaar or all this online they create an app which does not cost them more than 50 lakh to 1 crore okay and how many people do they cater they cater 500 to 600 million so you see the figure 10000 and 600 million this is the biggest difference which technology is bringing in on one side you can only cater to a limited i mean if you are in lucknow you won't go to kanpur big bazaar or for that matter if you are in gomti nagar you won't go to something like you know which is in charbagh for example that far so but if it is flipkart i mean flipkart is there in everyone's mobile it is uh, amazon is there in everyone's mobile so that's the biggest difference which technology is bringing now the third thing is exponential growth exponential growth means not 4 plus 4 plus 4 but rather the growth should be 4 into 4 into 4 and which is coming frankly uh, okay so let me here ask a question how much did uh, sachin bansal made money by selling flipkart so even if you do a random guess i mean people know the answer i believe but he made good 5000 5000 crore worth of money by selling flipkart and how much time did it take it took him less than 10 years now tell me how many of us around us 10 years 5000 crore he made and he literally made out of nothing he had uh, you know he you can read in his interviews he started his company with just 3 to 4 lakh rupees now this is not a fancy story believe me so we run uh, uh, you know marwadi angel network and we are fairly new angel network there are angel network which are much bigger and much older in fact you know india angel network hyderabad angel probably in lucknow also there will be angel network these guys fund good startup so today to do a startup you don't need your money money is chasing good ideas we are short of good startups frankly uh, they, uh, 10 year back i used to you know meet so many people entrepreneurs saying sir bahut acha idea i am not getting investors today situation is different you cannot say you are not getting money if you really have a good idea a good team there are enough money chasing your idea so so that's what a uh, element of startup is okay now let me also give you another example and and see in 20 minutes frankly i can just tell you couple of storytelling you know trailer is what i am saying because in depth we'll have to take lot of things so so I, i'll just give you couple of example which will help you initiate the thought process probably how your new venture should look like what should be the characteristic of the new venture now another example i'll just give you which is very common which you will all of us will be able to relate so how many of you know hcl hcl prominent name everyone knows uh, 
Hindustan Computers Limited and people from Lucknow would definitely know because there is something called HCL City. I believe IT City is there. So, so HCL, a good brand from India. We are all proud about it. And, uh, do, do, uh, and no offense to them. This is just an example I'm trying to give. So HCL uh, started 45 years back. Uh, 1972 okay uh, 45 year plus it's been and how many employees do they have right now they have two lakh employees okay now follow me hcl 45 year old company two lakh employees what is their revenue right now their revenue is eight billion dollar which means one billion is seven thousand five hundred crore into eight whatever the figure can be sixty thousand crore or whatever it will come if and what is the market cap of hcl market cap of HCL is $18 billion, which means 18 into 7,500 crore. That is the worth of HCL if someone wants to buy HCL. Now, my next question is, how many of you know WhatsApp? Okay, now tell me how many of you don't know WhatsApp? So probably everyone knows WhatsApp is what I'm assuming. Now you, WhatsApp, when did it start? It started just 10 to 12 years back. It started in 2008. It got sold within five years of its existence. So 2014, WhatsApp got sold. Now, my question comes here. When WhatsApp was sold, it was sold for 14, uh, sorry, $18 billion as good as HCL being sold. This is just a comparison I'm doing. Okay. But here is the biggest difference. Right now, I said HCL's revenue will be easily 60,000 crore. What was WhatsApp's revenue when it was sold? It was just $1 million, which is 7 crore. So on one side, you have a company which has 60 to 70,000 crore of revenue. On the other hand, you have a company which is not even 7 crore revenue. And now let's come with the biggest surprise. HCL today has 2 lakh employees. When WhatsApp was sold in 2014, how many employees were there? Any guess? There were only 68 employees. So you see, 68 people can make a company in just five years what HCL took 45 years and two lakh employees to create. So that is what is called startup and that is what is called traditional business. So this is a very clear distinction I'm trying to make that if you are doing a business, traditional business, there was certain growth which used to be. But right now in the age of startup, that is the accelerated pace that we have. People turn billionaire in just a couple of years. And see, some, some people do get me wrong in, uh, saying that, you know, okay, uh, uh, founders make money. W what is in it for us? You know, we as a common people, you know, how does it make a difference in my life? It does make a difference, you know, so, so uh, these startups, if you know, they, they have a concept called ESOPs, Employee Stock Option Plan. So with Flipkart, there are at least 2,000, 3,000 people more than that who make tons of money. So money got, you know, distributed. So wealth got distributed. So that is one part of it. The second part is, let me move another slide. These are all great example, but the problem is all my slide takes at least five minutes to explain. So, so these are interesting story we'll cover sometime. Now, what is that second thing that startups are doing interesting? Uh, uh, so, you know, so a typical example, let me ask you, most of us, many of us will have kids. I mean, uh, my age or probably senior of me, you know, will have kids. And if your son or daughter is doing, you know, 10, 12th or BTEC, whatever classes, what is the first priority that they do after job? Uh, I mean, when it comes to job, probably get placed into an IT company. Okay, Deloitte, uh, you know, Infosys, TCS. I mean, these are the blue eyed boys of, you know, India, India's corporate, you know, uh, uh, this thing. So, but the, 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 the problem is in last three years, you know, these guys were the, the biggest hiring companies in India. They used to hire at least 3 lakh engineers every year. Right now, if you look at it, they are hiring less than 1 lakh engineers every year. The reason is they are able to do same thing with lesser number of people because of automation. Artificial intelligence has come. Machine learning has come. What used to require 10 people to do is now being done by one. So they don't need to hire anymore. 
then my question is then where will my kid or the newer generation will get a job if they are a btech so the next question is being answered by startups if you go to any campus right now in bangalore mumbai hyderabad the biggest placement is happening by big basket ola swiggy so all these startups are coming and they are doing the placement so it is not that you know startups are just making money for their own they are creating jobs and they are doing things in a very different way now uh, ritu ma'am how much time do i have left very well i think uh, you've exhausted your 20 minutes but we can give you two <laughs> more sorry, minutes then i'll i'll, I'll just quickly wrap up sorry i mean my problem is uh, this the subject itself is pretty vast and you know i uh, we need more time to do justice to this subject but but uh, but i'll just wrap up in just two minutes okay two three minutes more thank you thank you yeah so so uh, let me come to couple of uh, quick quick conclusion points and that will be you know startup msme these are the two things which will be you know the key focus for next 10 years considering we don't have much of job creation happening so when it comes to self reliant you know it is not just word but practically most of us you know many of our new generation will have to do something of their own now when it comes to um, uh, doing something of your own the good part is government has lot of focus you have lot of incubators around you you have lot of investors around you who can fund your ideas believe me i started my company without a, a single rupee it is a funded company it is funded by investors i raised money and i am doing good investors are happy so the point i am trying to say and, and i am no great person there are hundreds and thousands of startup doing much better than us so 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 point is if you have a good idea startup is a place where you can get good funding if you have good idea you can execute it and you can execute it for society is good as well now with this i'll try to wrap up with the last one example now when it comes to okay many of you might have heard about something called fortune 500 companies so you know all this while you know all these developed countries and all us uk they made this concept of fortune 500 which means top 500 companies in the world okay you know how many indian companies come in that ranking in that league not even 7 or 8 this year it was 6 or 7 okay so uh, traditionally it has been 5 some year 8 but 7 companies is what is get uh, what is list uh, you know part of that fortune 500 elite list now why we are so much excited about startup because india is third biggest capital of startup in the world number 1 number 2 startups ka wo jo elite club hai na uh, uh, like we have fortune 500 company we call it unicorn unicorn means startup who have valuation more than 1 billion dollar so globally there are 270 unicorns yani the top startup in the world are 270 which have valuation more than 1 billion you know how many indian startup are there 10% which is 27 of that unicorn club is owned by india and let me tell you which will make your you know heart and chest swell further is that if you look at indian founders 25% of global top startups are owned by indians so that is something of pride not just for us for government for our society we are doing really great over there so hence with last one example you know so we we talked about something like space travel in between so you know nasa went to mars nasa when they went to mars mars mission how much they spend on that mm -hmm. so they spend 5000 crore 5000 crore which is 671 million to reach mars okay you know gravity movie many of us might have seen on netflix amazon prime there is a movie called gravity very nice movie the budget of this movie was 100 million dollar yani 750 crore now when this challenge came to isro boss hamare paas to paisa nahi hai you know but still we want to go to mars we still we want to do mangalyaan then you know how much money we took to do that mission just 500 crore which is 73 million dollar which means ek movie ke budget se bhi kam mein we completed our mangalyaan so that's the that's the beauty about indian mind they are very frugal they are very innovative you give them a challenge they will cha solve the challenge in at a cheap, you know much lesser price with a much better utility so with that i'll close my uh, you know uh, my session my speech and thank you very much for this opportunity
Thank you so much, Mr. Tripathi, for initiating today's discussion on a very, very optimistic note and really making us all Indians feel so proud and also encouraging the entrepreneurs, assuring us that there is no shortage of funds. Of course, we'll get back to you with questions later on. But I personally feel that uh, apart from funds, uh, there are other challenges which startups, feel, uh, startups have to encounter. And uh, they really need to build a competitive advantage in terms of quality, cost, design, and so many other things in order to compete successfully. So our next speaker, Mr. Ved Krishna, Managing Director, Yash Papers Limited, will tell us how building upon natural competitiveness is possible. So over to you, Mr. Krishna. Please unmute yourself. Sorry about that. When it's a long mute, you forget that you're muted. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> yeah, Thank you so much, uh, Rituji, for this uh, invite. Uh, Mathur Saab, uh, the Department of Business at University of Lucknow. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, Subhashji, can I just ask you to stop sharing your screen? Your screen is still shared. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Uh, so great. Uh, so I'm so happy to be here and uh, so happy to be spending time with you. I particularly enjoy uh, spending time with students and academia. There's always so much energy that can be gathered. So again, you know, we don't have physical uh, space, but it's good to at least have uh, space on the web uh, with, with each other. So I'm sure it'll be an exciting session and I look forward to more interaction. So I'm, I'm I actually, Rituji, I think you planned this on purpose. You know, I have so many things I want to say to what Subhashji was saying. So I'm glad you kept me after him. Uh, there's so many interesting things there, but I'm going to first uh, delve into uh, the ideas uh, of, uh, you know, how do you build on natural competitiveness? And I'm going to start from the idea of the individual, the self. What I find really amazing is that most of us go through life without knowing our genius or our purpose. And it is amazing that I have actually had the opportunity to speak at various forums. And uh, this could be just to various CEOs, you know, like maybe 100 CEOs in a room. And literally not even one hand goes up when I ask, do you know what your purpose is? Which is amazing because, you know, if we don't know what our soul is here for, it's kind of difficult to really find uh, what we should be contributing. And when I delve into this idea, so I, I know that most of uh, this, the listeners here are from academia. So when I delve into this idea, I find that, you know, our education system has been so designed that it basically is trying to produce automatons or standardized humans. So, you know, so... Uh, the education system was designed during the industrial age uh, for a certain purpose, which was to provide a certain kind of individuals. It could be en engineers, doctors, lawyers, whatever. We still seem to be staying with that syndrome. And um, then, so what happens is fundamentally, there's a hierarchy of subjects. Uh, you know, of course, everybody wants to study science, maths, maybe after that, sociology, and after that, maybe languages. And then it goes down to, you know, nobody wants to do music, arts, sports, or, you know, it's looked down upon. And then even within that, you know, I find there's a certain hierarchy, music before dance, you know, that sort of thing. So there's a certain hierarchy because of the society. And that leads to many of our geniuses getting suppressed. Uh, what, what, again, my experience is more on the practical side from the companies we run and the, and what, uh, what, what we find is that, uh, we lose out as a company, we lose out on really finding the individual's genius uh, because of that. Uh, the second thing, and which relates me to what uh, Subhashji was saying before me, there is so much of comparison and competitiveness that is fed into us. You know, right from the time we are born, it is, you know, the neighbor's kid, you know, does this, you are not able to do this. Uh, to, you know, the competition for in education starts right at nursery. And then, of course, you know, you're supposed to come first in every class. Uh, you're supposed to stand on, there has to be high standards on sports. Uh, you Then you eventually pass out of school. You're supposed to get through university or through some competitive exam, CAT, NAT, NAT, whatever it may be. And, uh, and you know, that gets so much into our psyche. 
Uh, and I find that to be a repetitive uh, system at uh, work as well, where the only way you want to go ahead is by suppressing someone else, because that is pretty much what has been uh, taught to us through our life, which actually is not the way life functions. I find that, you know, people who are actually able to collaborate more are actually able to provide, are, are, are actually able to live more wholesome lives and also able to become more successful uh, because it is not about suppressing the other uh, person at all. So, so when it comes to the individual, uh, we, I think it's really important uh, to be able to find our own uh, genius, uh, ikigai as they call it in Japanese. What are we here for? How can we serve the world better? How can we contribute more? What does the world need from us? I think those questions are really important and they need to be asked and they need to be built by, as part of the school system. So, but what am I, why am I talking about this at all when I'm, we're talking about natural competitiveness? So I'm going to take that from the individual uh, to the same thing happens as we go further. Uh, we go into our districts, our states, our nations, our continents, our globe. Uh, we find that, you know, we tend to run in certain directions. And again, coming back to what Tripathi was saying, everything is about startup right now. So, you know, the startup is the good thing. But is it really our acumen? Is it really our uh, natural resource that is the, leading us to that? So, so, you know, if I look at uh, India's struggle with independence, uh, of course, we all know that we were governed for a decent amount of time uh, by Britain. Uh, the Industrial Revolution happened during that time. And because of that, a lot of our manufacturing power was taken away where, you know, a lot of raw materials were exported and a lot of finished goods were bought back. You know, we also heard of stories where even a needle was, you know, uh, had to be uh, purchased from England. So we came out with uh, the Nehruvian ideology where, you know, again, very similar to Atman Nirbharta, it could, could be Swadeshi. Uh, you know, the idea was that we are going to produce everything on our own. And we did. We produced everything on our own and we did it so badly. You know, the only two cars we had was Ambassador and Fiat or Padmini. Uh, the, the, the only scooter we had was Bajaj uh, Chetak, which you had to till to start. Uh, the, the, you know, there, there were various, we can have find examples in every which way, you know, where uh, it, it was, it, that was the case. Um, whereas there were other countries uh, which took a different path. It wasn't about trying to produce everything. It was about what are we good at? And can we graduate from one thing to another? And we could look at the Japanese system or even the Korean system where they said, okay, let us initially look at basic things. Let's look at iron and steel. You know, we are going to produce, we're going to be producers of iron and steel. We are going to do it really well. We are going to export it across the world. And we are going to then from that money earned, we are going to invest in other things. Then we may, we may go for semiconductors and, you know, then we may go for mobile phones and then we may go for something else more high tech. So it was a gradual sort of movement towards that. But there was a whole psyche or rather our psyche was governed by the idea that we have to produce everything and the other psyche did not have that insecurity in there. So, so what I'm trying to get at is that excellence is really important in trying to excel and really become good at things is important and that requires specialization and more than that it requires us to know what are our natural geniuses and what do we have to do to act on it uh, so if i look at my own journey uh, i came from a very free environment my parents were extremely encouraging to do whatever we wanted uh, but what i found was that at some point i entered uh, my father's business and I found that I entered it uh, maybe maybe because of some situational issues. Although one of my gurus says is that nothing in life is a coincidence. So so you know because of circumstantial issues, I would say. Uh, so so I entered the business, but I spent about fifteen years trying to be like my father, and it took me fifteen years to realize that you know I have a different mindset and I have a different soul and, and I have a different uh, genius that I need to bring forth. Uh, my father never wanted that. My father wouldn't have even once said that, you know, you should try and emulate what I have done. He would have always encouraged, be your own person, do what you want. But, you know, we still carry that within us, uh, that you are trying to live up to a certain expectation, which may or may not be real. Uh, so so when, I, when I, 
it took me 15 years and only when we when i realized that my acumen is in different a different uh, domain the whole business shifted the whole business changed the whole performance changed uh, the way i function i was sort of literally feeling burnt out and you know i could i could just sort of uh, feel a difference in my own functioning as soon as i realized you know what uh, what uh, i should be doing and more than that the business realized what it is going to be good at how it can contribute towards a better world how it can sort of uh, serve mankind better humankind better rather than you know just looking at the idea of accumulation which is what actually troubles me also taking a cue from my previous speaker it actually is a little bit troublesome when we think about it is only about making that valuation and selling that company it's not about that i would rather be in the in the in the in the in the position of how, what is my contribution how am i leaving the people planet uh, performance all better because of my existence it is not about accumulating those billions what am i going to do with it you know ultimately there is only that much you can consume so that that is that is not the aim of course business needs to create value uh, but the value has to come in different ways it is not just it is not just the market share market valuation it is not just the profit valuation it is not just the value you were paid if somebody purchased you and of course we all know that you know uh, literally one out of 100 startups actually succeeds so you know so of course there are stories on both sides so we need to be aware of that and that's a slippery slope and i find the life is life is much more fulfilling if we can have a deeper purpose and create deeper meaning in our lives and in businesses so let's let's get back to the core topic of you know our competitiveness so let's look at up so when i participate in various uh, forums government discussions again we look at you know defense corridor should be opened here uh, we should have a high tech city uh, you know i've heard so many you know there will be different ideas and they are basically the trend startup nation you know this is all that needs to be done and you know there will be so many resources that needs to be spent and of course it's a, it's a great uh, you know we always want to spend more because uh, you know that that has different uh, you ideas around it again but if you look at up itself what are our real strengths we are we have a huge population uh, you know the, we, we can see the migration crisis uh, people ask me you know are you facing something in the in your industry and i say yeah i'm facing it the other way around you've sent all your people back here and now we have to ensure that you know we get we get more people employed so you know so up especially east up runs so much of the country and the world you know dubai and mumbai and you know uh, so many other areas so we have people that's one of our powers we have the gangetic plains we have a beautiful agrarian uh, you know natural uh, location uh, there is so much history there is uh, incidentally you know there is so much history that is untapped so you know what are the things we can do so what we we can of, of course do things like education skilling what are the industries you can say that you know the what was the example given whatsapp is better than hcl but whatsapp exactly the example you employed 68 people hcl employed 2 lakhs people so we would rather have an hcl in up than have a whatsapp in up because that will not help up so that's the kind of industry we need to attract we need to ensure that there is social harmony in order to have social harmony we need to have industries that will actually be able to absorb the kind of uh, human power we have uh we need to have things that run on agriculture whether it is food processing or using agricultural residues like we do um and you know industries around that you know how can we enhance more value rather than selling raw material like we did to england and bought back when it goes how do we convert that to higher value here uh what is the methodology of improving our infrastructure how do we uh, ensure that the, the that the all the history that we are bestowed with all the all the mythology we are restored with whether it's mathura or ayodhya so you know so how do we build up on top of that there is a lot that can be done there's a lot of uh, income that can be generated there so we need to actually look at that and again of course uh, you know and we can go uh, from up to india uh, we can look at that and of course uh, right in the beginning uh, uh, you know we we talked about this and uh, you know the whole china angle that is becoming very 
uh, hyped up and you know i see even in my little town of ayodhya people burning effigies of uh, premier shi in the middle of the road and i am just baffled by that uh, because we have to learn to if quote and quote win win is a difficult word again for me uh, but quote and quote win on the basis of our strength our competitiveness we cannot win by banning people because that actually reduces our strength if i say i want no competition of course i would love it i would love to be a monopoly uh, but is it good for me no it's not good for me because competition makes me better so i would rather you know and when i go to china i see so much innovation there is so much difference so a simple example like this was about 15 years back i was in shandong province north of china middle of nowhere driving on this road 9 in the morning eight lanes and there's hardly any vehicles and i asked my guy you know it's 9 am is the is is the is the is the peak hours different he said no 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 this is this is the time so i said but there's no traffic he said yeah there will be five years later now if i look at the reverse in our case we are always reacting you know the the traffic is crazy and then you build a road and by the time the road is built the traffic is already crossed that part and then you start planning another lane which is going to take another few years so it's a very different acumen when i look at a chinese worker today i run certain chinese machines which i supply as a chinese and uh, i find that my literally it takes me eight workers to do one chinese worker's job if the chinese worker one worker takes care of four machines in our case two workers are needed on every machine so why is that there is a, there is an issue so we need to improve on those things rather than look at banning and things like that because that will actually make us poorer not uh, better so so you know with those words uh, i uh, i would like to just close with the idea that you know the, what is truly important is to set up systems that take us towards excellence that take us towards transparency that take us towards performance uh, what and 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 we have to let go of everything else let us become more excel in what we do specialize in what we do become much more transparent let's not hide things let's become more overt let's look at only performance as the norm let's not look at any other you know ye acha aadmi hai ye bura aadmi hai ye acha kaam karta hai ye kharab kaam karta hai is something we don't understand you know whether the person is competent or not there is a certain criteria and that needs to be met it doesn't matter whether he is good at good to his leader or not good to his her leader so you know so that is the kind of india and the kind of up and the kind of uh, uh, companies that we need to build uh, and i'm i'm hopeful that uh, you know that is the direction we will uh, slowly take as we move forward so thank you once again for having me and uh, and thank you for the time thank you so much mr krishna but please do stay back for question and answer session which will happen later on so going further on that note of optimism particularly in the era of competitiveness and banning and shunning of chinese products you are talking about harmony you're talking about acceptance you're talking about excellence you're talking about sustainable global society well a very nice vision so uh, moving on government policies go a long way in developing the ecosystem which is required for encouraging startups or the msme So, Dr. Navneet Sagar, Principal Secretary, Khadi and Village Industries, the Department of MSME Government of UP, is amid such. While he travels to another city for some official work, so see, this is the power of technology. While he is en route to some other city, uh, Dr. Sagar very kindly consented to to continue participating in this. So, Dr. Sagar will share government's perspective on self-reliance India. over to you sir dr sagar you'll have to unmute yourself yeah now can you hear me yes we can hear you okay thank you so much uh, ritu ji and uh, it's a nice listening to mr tripathi and ved Ved uh, Krishna is an old friend, and I've seen him transforming from a young man to a, a I don't know, excellent uh, entrepreneur. See, uh, from both the persons, I've uh, kind of uh, 
I am confused. You see, we are not, uh, you know, in a vacuum. The, there are now geopolitical situations. We are now a global economy, intertwined with each other. There are global supply chains. There are uh, markets are affected by you know, global demands or global uh, prices. So that way, if you see, in the current context of geopolitical issues, the urgency to create more and more industry here in India, you know, is becoming becoming more important and more important day by day. You see, now as in olden times, the war used to be fought uh, by humans, and then it came to the machines. Now, you see. This is the economic age. Wars are fought on economics, money power. You know, all these things, they are not visible, but they are there. So that way, it is imperative that uh, we create this ecosystem where there is an incentive for people to start manufacturing. I'll tell you the small, small things which uh, I think you were know, never thought earlier. You know, we have a pro program called One District, One Product, where we are you know, developing the traditional clusters, which have been there for years. Like uh, Muradabad is for handicraft, Lucknow is for chicken, the, 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 the merit is for sports goods. So these sort of clusters, they're there, which are the strength, because there are skill available, there is the, you know, uh, people who, who are already into the business, they are available. So they are doing, so they're doing, over the years they've been doing, so improving upon their skills, improving upon their costs and all those things. So I was giving you an example, like there's a place called Sambal in UP. They make uh, buttons out of uh, animal hides, animal bones, sorry. So... What they used to do was they used to make buttons, rough buttons, and then those buttons used to go to China. And from China, they used to get, they, they used to get finished and they used to come back. I think there's some signal issue. Yeah. They were used to any third country. So these you know, can be done as a management. Can you hear? Hello? Yeah, we can hear. We could hear you, but we had lost you in between. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, can you hear me? Yeah, so I would uh, see what Ved was saying, our own strength. So I we you know, the government of UP is not. Already started the program. Products have been there for ages. We're trying to kind of uh, put technology into it, put uh, other interventions, both soft and hard interventions, to create better product, to improve efficiency, to reduce costs. So I was giving you an example of uh, a place called Sambal, which has uh, buttons as uh, as product, which buttons they are making from uh, animal bones. So those are the low-hanging fruits which we should immediately catch on. And now what we are doing is we are getting that machine itself from uh, other country. And we are getting them to finish the buttons on those machines in India only. So that they can be exported uh, to third countries. Now you see, UP, our government has a very... Uh, good uh, startup policy, which is now being revised to give more and more incentives to startups uh, being set up in uh, Uttar Pradesh. There are many benefits of startup. But I would, uh, you know, 
say that instead of going in for startups in service sector, we should encourage uh, startups in the manufacturing sector also. The 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 issue of manufacturing is very important. We have started a dialogue with uh, Indian embassies abroad. We have already had a discussion with Indian embassy in US, Indian embassy in Germany, Indian embassy in Thailand, Indian embassy in uh, uh, you see um, uh, Russia. So these there we are getting these responses that you see as I started there are global supply chain issues. Every country whosoever had their prime bases in China are working on thinking of developing alternative supply chain. No, that way we have our strength. We have strength in terms of labor. We have strength in terms of availability of land for industries. We have uh, you know, certain uh, subsidies, incentives, and above all, we have skill. We have such a huge pool of uh, skilled people. And Mr. Tripathi gave these data as that our average age is 29. So we have large skill of large pool of skill, which we can utilize to uh, Mr. Sehgal, we've lost your voice again. Hello, Mr. Sehgal. We lost your voice. Hello, Mr. Sehgal, can you hear me? I think. Yeah. We I think we've lost the connect with Mr. Sehgal. Mr. Sehgal, are you there? Mr. Sehgal? I think we've lost the connect with him. So maybe we will wait for him to join back. Can you hear me? I'm again lost. Yeah, yes. can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, please. Hello, yeah? Yes, please continue. We can hear you. We can hear you, Mr. Se uh, Mr. Sehgal. Please continue. We have a large agriculture base. We have a, a good, huge pool of... I think the area from where you are traveling is very poor signal. So, Mr. Sehgal, may I request you to please switch so off your video? Together, we certainly, so, what I want to say is that, yeah, is it all right now? Yes, this is fine. Thank you so much. Yes, Mr. Sehgal. This is, we are all working towards inviting companies, entrepreneurs to come and set up industry in UP. Particularly those products which are now being imported, imported from any country, not uh, only China, but any country. If they are imported and they can be made here. And I tell you, I see UP, we have companies which are making very fine those cables for F-16 plane. We have companies we are which are making components for the best automobile uh, vehicles in the world, the companies in the world. So we have talent. We have uh, people who can come up and, uh, you know, start manufacturing, start manufacturing companies. The government policies are there. Government is more and more proactive in this uh, these times. 
the pandemic uh, as the as the honorable prime minister says you know we should use it as an opportunity and try and rethink and rethink our strategy rework our strategy to try and produce more and more in up because in the coming years because of the global you know there are uh, global recession somewhere in the world but it affects us so we should have our own manufacturing systems particularly those products which we are importing now from any country and contribute to our national wealth national economy and of course uh, to bring employment to a lot of people more than 35 lakh people came back to our state during this pandemic we, you know many of them we are you know employing in different different areas but yeah there is a large pool of people which also need employment and simultaneously we our chief minister has given us a target of uh, taking our economy to a 1 trillion dollar economy so that's a big challenge and to become a 1 trillion dollar economy we need to bring industry to the state and that's what we are all trying we are all welcoming people to you know entrepreneurs we have lot of schemes uh, to come and invest in up thank you i think you know communication challenges but still i could say my you know whatever i wanted to say thank you this message thank you thank you so much uh, mr sehgal for uh, you know being with us and encouraging us but please stay with us because there are a few questions which have come and yes you have very rightly pointed out that we need to look at things through a different perspective look at this challenge which has come our way in the form of an opportunity and uh, encourage local while trying to focus on the global trade so uh, mr sehgal there is this question there are number of questions which we received but uh, uh, if you permit me i'll start with this one yeah yeah please so the first one is how long will it take india to become self reliant in producing goods to replace chinese imports has any study or deliberation been done to assess this no no you know we have been working on it but there is no specific specifics because you see a lot of if you say china there are a lot of products which are coming from hong kong but they are basically manufactured in china so there are you know many product coming from different companies but produced in china so i am not talking about that i am saying we should you know start manufacturing whatever we are importing today it is china tomorrow it may be somebody else so this challenge will always be there so better is that we prepare ourselves now because you know when we got independence we did not have skilled people now after 70 years we have skills available we have people in, in interested in investing we have the governments who have the wherewithal to support so we should think about starting as soon as possible and many of the entrepreneurs are coming up also it's not that uh, there, there is a dearth of people many people are coming up to you know start uh, the production of you know the the products which are being imported from other countries so yes Thank and you. so may may i ask another question thank you for answering the first one so well uh, it's very true that the pandemic has caused countries to look at localizing their production or supply chains to mitigate the disruptive effect of the covid-19 crisis so well this means a major opportunity a major economic opportunity for india to attract investment and yes up is taking an initiative in that direction but yet you know we are not that successful as our neighboring countries have been i was reading the times of india today where it said that countries like vietnam and bangladesh have been more successful so what do you think could be the reasons that we are not able to attract so much of foreign investment in up when the other countries are succeeding actually you see it's basically labor which is uh, the, the 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 major uh, kind of a blog but what we what we had a comparison of labor cost 
you see what we have not been able to project ourselves our eastern up area which now we are now with which now the government is projecting if you compare labor cost of uh, bangladesh and vietnam with india many, many of us we have been we have been comparing with uh, the labor cost in noida or labor cost around delhi when you see the labor cost in uh, eastern up it is as uh, as good as uh, as low as one could say or approximately nearby bangladesh and vietnam but the thing is they have been traditionally attracting such outsourcing facilities from other countries but india it comes to a product with technology product which requires skills they look for india if it is a totally labor oriented then they are going to different you know south asian countries but that is what i am saying we have to you know leverage our skill and uh, uh, kind of uh, attract investment on both the combination of both skill and labor whatever we may not be able to compensate by labor we can do it by skill so that way a lot of manufacturers from the us and other countries they want to come and set up their uh, you know manufacturing facilities here but it takes time see currently the 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 the, the, the companies you know because of the the, the orders the, sub, the the decline in demand so most of the companies in the world they are facing these issues there are you know financial issues so what they are doing is they are thinking about it deciding but it will take time for them to invest somewhere so we have to be patient and we have to be you know perseverance to persevere with them to you know help uh, convince them to come to india thank you thank you so much but please do stay back in case we have more questions for you uh, my colleague dr anu kohli has got some questions so anu uh, please take over so much ma'am thank you so much uh, this is a question for mr ved uh, mr ved krishnan if you can just uh, unmute yourself it was really nice and uh, you know I, it was really uh, well versatile you know the talk was very good and you just pressed upon a lot of things you talked about setting up of systems which were you know transparent which were going to give us excellence which was going to give us and talk about you know, the uh, performance really do you think that we are talking about something which is called as business challenge that is um, where we need to adapt to a lot of changes which are going to take place very soon and a time of uh, adapting to these changes we need to also talk about taking care of all our assets assets such as our financial assets our human assets and all can you elaborate on this sir sorry i lost you in between there was a disturbance in the line so so can you just can you just give me the gist of the question again uh, just i wanted to say that uh, in this particular time span when you are talking about you know adapting and making a lot of changes and uh, changes, uh, like but do you have to think about things such as you know we need to take care yeah, we are, we are. Uh, competitiveness along with you know taking care of our asset asset both our financial assets as well as our human assets if you like we would be able to succeed can you elaborate sure. sure absolutely i can uh, i can try and think of uh, a point of view uh, in the end um, so so i'll i'll stay with uh, our uh, thought process as a as an organization um, and uh, so so say when the pandemic actually started of course we were all caught uh, relatively off guard and uh, it suddenly sort of dawned on us that you know we have to stop production we have to you know make sure uh, we have to still sort of uh, survive uh, uh, etc so it was it was quite an, a daunting challenge and of course we all got together and we have an absolutely amazing team uh, and we discussed uh, everything uh, up front and the idea was that you know how long can we sustain our uh, cash flow uh, what we realized was that thankfully by the grace of god and just just the situation was such that uh, even if we didn't have any incoming uh, any a, any revenues coming in uh, we knew that we could sustain for 6 to 8 months 
so so right up front we told our workers don't worry you know like it's it's totally okay 6 to 8 months after that we worry you know before that we don't have to worry but that's just our situation and of course i have friends who've had to sort of you know cut down on labor cut down on uh you know various uh, attributes and struggle uh, in the same uh, period so i think it will be situation to situation uh, ultimately the key for any economy will lie in how quickly can we really bounce back and uh, and of course you know there will be uh, there will be opportunities there will be possibilities that will happen for us uh, i find that uh, there is more possibilities than uh, challenges um or rather the challenging possibilities uh, so so you know we on one side we have uh, mr trump who doesn't somehow uh, who wants to ban china from everything which is a great thing for us uh, as navdeep bhai has said in between so you know there's a huge opportunity that you know uh, suddenly people are looking to india uh, and uh, and we were trying to knock on various doors before they were not opening and suddenly they are they are coming to us but you know it's a, it's a, it's ultimately a double edged sword you cannot uh, you, you know these macro economic and political economic uh, possibilities only give you inroads into they, they'll give you a foothold that's all but ultimately you want the customer to be really really happy uh, if that is not the case the business won't work so you know the whether we can ban things we can give incentivization we can shift things here we can say we'll produce everything here but ultimately we'll end up with bajaj scooters and padmini cars so that is what is going to happen if we are not good at what we do the key is still to become excellent at what we do so so again coming back to my our example so we can get a foothold into the american market but today if the customer realizes that chinese supplier was good he would still do it just uh, just just because there is a compulsion but as soon as they have an alternate they will shift so again from for us as a business it's still the the, the challenges are still uh, going to be to find uh, to to be a global powerhouse and for that we have to create uh, excellence and that is what is going to enable whether it's a financial asset or a human asset or a or or a, or a plant and machinery everything is going to only work on excellence and as uh, as somebody else mentioned you know this is a time when this can be utilized we we spent a lot of time looking at our systems practices processes how do we improve them how do you uh, make them world class so that is what we need to spend time and reflect on we've just you know just had the great uh, possibility that we could have sustained in this time hence we could have uh, looked at this so i hope i'm able to answer your query Yes, definitely sir thank you so much ma'am do we have more time for uh, uh, like yes i think we must ask something for mr tripathi we have received fine, fine, fine. question sure would you like to ask anu uh, ma'am you go ahead if you have any then i'll yeah yeah so there is a question which has come up uh, mr tripathi are you there yes ma'am yeah so uh, the question is and uh, you were talking about the innovative idea how you know when you have an innovative idea it's so easy to get funds so the question is if innovative idea is the key to a startup it is seen that as soon as a new idea is converted to a business plan the clones immediately appear so how can a startup deal with competition good 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 question actually ma'am so so see you know competition will be there and uh, wait sir said it very well you know competition has to be there you know so couple of my marwadi friends you know and and these are all part of our you know angel network where we fund startup you know couple of so innovative ideas came that you know it was so innovative that we have never seen such thing and uh, you know and then later on they but still the startup could not raise money and then i was like i was asking my couple of colleagues why didn't you invest money into it so they said see marwadi mein ek baat bolte hain jahan par gud hai wahi par makhi aayegi और जहां पर मक्खी नहीं है इसका मतलब गुड़ भी नहीं है सो इफ इट इज सो इनोवेटिव दैट यू नो वी कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड कस्टमर कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड देन हाउ विल ही सेल द प्रोडक्ट सो सो माय पॉइंट इज competition will come competition will help you spread the message see ma'am what has happened is you know byju has come okay byju uh, that education app when they came you know they actually educated all the parents that okay there is online classes you know there is lot of benefit so the competition also got benefit that you know there is someone who is already educating the customer first time so you will see that impact benefiting each other 
and eventually there will be four or five winners which is standard say so, you know you take any industry there will be four or five winners the smarter one the faster one and all those things but competition is bound to happen and it is good you know it, it's good for you know growth and you know valuation funding sorry i have to talk about valuation uh, you know it might seem like little you know profit centering uh, centric sort of you know discussion but but that, that that's what is you know startup all about yeah thank you so much anu would you like to take another question maybe uh, we can have one last question i know we are just overshooting but maybe uh, one more question thank you so much ma'am a lot of questions have been asked and some thank of them have already been answered in your presentations and your talks i really appreciate everybody uh, this i think um, let me just put this a question and i think uh, uh, tripathi sir or uh, krishn sir any one of you would like to answer this do you really think that brands must revamp their marketing strategies to stay competitive in this particular era and some of the you know the major brands have already started you know changing their line of actions so do you really think that it is a good step for the companies for the probably the, the startups also to start talking about uh, you know changing and revamping their brand strategies i'll take a quick just two three liners wait sir and then uh, up to you right. uh, yeah so in fact I, i'll 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 steal some of your words you know so so see you know Uh, let it be a startup or a corporate there is a famous line by probably philip kotler he said that you know the best marketing is a satisfied customer once you have a satisfied customer that's the best marketing that you can do and if it is not sat satisfied you know whatever you do goes into drain so so i think that's part one part two yes but i do agree that a lot of change in business model will happen so right now uh, since i come from little bit of publication industry uh, you know so a lot of these paid database lot of these paid content we have now put it for free uh, looking at the covid situation we know that customer are not going to pay us but let's give them for free for some time probably there is a goodwill there is higher subscribers who will come who will later on you know kind of pay for our service so you will have to definitely shift your Uh, business model a for to to really do a societal cause but the second also to survive as uh, you know i think bait sir or, or someone else also mentioned that you know the survival rate is very less hardly 5 to 10% of the total startup survive actually after 3 years so so survival is important many of us actually run pillar to post you know uh, managing every month's cash flow so it's important to uh, change the business model rather than get killed during this difficult times yeah thank you so, so i think uh, and uh, so yeah so uh, so i believe uh, i know that everything has to be in the evolution it's not just marketing or this and it's not covid or non covid mm -hmm. i don't think there is should be any uh, any time when we are not evolving and of course the speed of uh, evolution goes much faster when there is an external impetus like uh, a good one like uh, covid uh but that said if i look at great companies they are constantly evolving if i look at an apple or um, or a tesla or you know any such thing it's not just uh, it's not just the covid times i constantly see them coming out with new material new ways to market new possibilities new financing systems new you know just just uh, different uh, methodologies so so you know evolution is a must and that is that is the law of nature anyways you know it's taken 3.8 billion years for the earth to evolve us and it's constantly evolving we are constantly evolving uh, that said you know covid of course uh, asks for a very different uh, uh, you know different approach uh, and i don't think anybody knows nobody has a clue right now what to do everybody is hitting in the dark uh, and something is going to work something is not going to work but the basics of business will remain the same you know basics of business are that you need a customer need a supplier and you need a product and there is then an exchange of economics that happens so so that basic has to remain so that has to take place so if even if i produce a very high quality uh, packaging uh, material if the markets are not open in the end the final customer if the market is not open there is nothing i can do about it whatever marketing i do whatever new methodology i take out that all is when the market actually opens so so in the end the basics of business will remain the the same the business will be on a buyer a seller and a product 
um, the, the, the evolution will constantly take place. External challenges, whether it is a war, a pandemic, or anything else, will present numerous opportunities. Now, the key is whether you take responsibility for your uh, organization and uh, look at it as an opportunity or a mayhem is on us. You know, our attitudes lie with us. So, you know, so the way we look at it, we will evolve. And once you're ready to evolve, ideas will appear, people will appear, you know, gurus will appear and, you know, that it'll all go on. So, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, sir, uh, Tripathi, sir, also. And thank you, Krishnan, sir. Ma'am, over to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anu. There are still so many questions, but I think we can't go ahead with more questions because of paucity of time. So all the speakers have been really fantastic. So uh, I will now request uh, Dr. Rajiv Prakash to briefly summarize the proceedings. Yeah, uh, Rituji, can I can I just add in case people have any questions? I'm very happy to answer them. I'm available. We are losing your voice. Yeah, sure. We will surely be sending the rest of the questions to you. Any questions which are there, we will just send them to you. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, so we can send them on LinkedIn and that's... Yeah, yeah. For sure, we will send them to you on LinkedIn. A uh, very good afternoon to all of you, leading to a very good evening. And today, we organized one of these e-seminars on a very important topic that was focused in the changing global environment, imperative for India. Although, this is a topic which always remains dynamic and it is always existent. So, it is there. But today, we had three speakers who talked about the issues of current and changing India, especially in COVID times, and that has been one of the biggest concerns. The first speaker was Subhash Tripathi ji, who is from a startup, and he talked about how a startup ecosystem in India can be developed from the point of view of entrepreneurs. It was an important area for the students coming out from the management stream, how they can understand the current environment. He talked about the initializing process of the startups. He also compared a few startups, which gives immense possibilities for the students to understand how they should be considering the worth of startups. So that was one of the very good areas for understanding how to be competitive. The second speaker was with Krishna, who talked about building on the nation through different kinds of activities and his, uh, his speech, his deliberation surrounded on how an individual should start off with the purpose because without a purpose, it becomes very difficult for anyone to pursue his own objectives. And that was the main focus. He also said, yes, when we are talking about education, in case of education, there are many issues in the Indian ecosystem, which are actually gaps for the students to move ahead. So we should try to put ourselves into an arena, which gives us an area to expand. So both of these speakers were strongly onto the competition part, but the issue of competitiveness was very well talked about by Dr. Navneet Sehgal. And when he was talking about the major issues, the difference as it came out was how to move strongly and how to make a nation competitive. Although his main concerns, as we all understand, are especially for the state of Uttar Pradesh, for which he is strongly putting and debating on how we can make this state more and more competitive. We have a number of schemes. So one of the main schemes that he came out was ODOP, that is one district and one product, which is also in line with the prime minister's intent of Atma Nirbhar Bharat. But these two are not the only areas which are there by the state government and the central government. We have Stand Up India, we have Digital India, we have Startup India. So I think all of them were referred to. He also gave us 
interesting examples. I think they are case studies for teachers as well as for students to study. What are the one products which are there in each of these districts which we can maybe say improve upon? The example of bones being carved out into buttons and then they being finally transported to China where they were being value added. So maybe some of those issues we need to once again study and understand their indicators, how we can, how we can well come up uh, uh, with this global environment and try to understand this global environment. Another major area that he came out was how can entrepreneurs now in the current environment set up new industries, whereby he very clearly said that there is a finance ecosystem which has been set up by the state. There is a subsidy ecosystem which also stands. And he also said that the government is continuously coming up with new areas of giving land and identifying new industries. So all of these issues, they are strongly for all of us who've been hearing to this seminar, to this webinar, and who will also be hearing to this webinar, not only today, but we know that the scope of webinars of our webinars from the Department of Business Administration, it extends to numerous people once, even when they are over, because they are continuously put up on the YouTube and other channels. So people are looking at these hits and there are heavy hits continuously on all the events that we've been doing in the past one month. Uh, I think that is where I should stop. That um, sums up the whole of these issues. And let me pass on this data to Ritu once again. Thank, Thank you, you Ari, for beautifully summarizing the entire proceedings and speaking so high of the department. Thank you so much. Now I request Professor Sanjay Madhavi, Head Department of Business Administration, to propose a formal vote of thanks. Over to you, Mr. Madhavi. Sanjay ji? Sanjay ji, control it. Okay, Please unmute. So uh, first of all, I'd like to go the other way around. I would like to thank all the participants uh, who have been uh, so patient and so patiently listening throughout this uh, entire seminar. And thanks for joining with us. I would like to uh, thank our uh, uh, speakers for the day today. Uh, Dr. Navidhi Sagal is such a busy person, we all know. And he had to rush on a emergency assignment. And even then, he agreed to link with us uh, on his way. So thank uh, uh, very much for uh, giving us that opportunity to listen to your thoughts and presenting the viewpoint of the government side on how things are shaping up and how we uh, the entrepreneurs can take use of the initiatives that are being put forward by the government. Then I would like to thank uh, Mr. Ved Krishna and Mr. Subhas Tripathi for uh, sparing time and being with us, uh, uh, sharing with us the viewpoint of the industry and how industry can cope and uh, how industry can make use of these opportunities which are coming forward. And uh, uh, what all we have to do, we have to keep on trying different things because uh, as, uh, as Ved Krishna ji explained, it, uh, we are in the time of uncertainty. No one is sure what is going to succeed in future and what is the way forward. So we have to do lots of hit and trials and we have to keep on trying new uh, ways of doing things and uh, new types of products and services. And uh, one day we will succeed. And uh, uh, I, I would like to thank uh, Lakshmi Management Association and especially uh, Mathurji for uh, being with us and uh, bringing the entire organization of LMA and the department together on many such occasions earlier also and uh, hope to continue this relationship for a long time, uh, uh, which is a mutually beneficial relationship. And uh, we will be organizing uh, lots of events in future also in association with the uh, Lakhno Management Association. Uh, Surely, Sanjay, we will do that. Yes, thank you for that. And uh, we will also try to make a summary of this uh, deliberations for today. And we'd like to forward it to uh, the LMA and also to the state government so that they can also make use of these learnings in their future policy decisions. Uh, 
Uh, send the recording youtube so uh, this uh, all our events are live on the youtube channel of the department and uh, uh, the recordings will be available there for all public wing and uh, uh, we will send you the link and from that link you can uh, view these recordings and the link can also be shared with the government if required so anyway anyone uh, will be able to review what has been said so uh, then i would like to thank all the faculty members of the department especially ritu narang for working uh, so hard for making this uh, event a success and uh, uh, then uh, on this evening so thank you all and uh, best of luck and uh, we would like to meet you again in our uh, next activity thank you all thank you so thank you everyone for joining us bye bye time bye Bye, bye everyone. Bye, bye Dr. Madhurma Pradhan. Bye, Dr. Yeah. Sharma. Yeah. And before we log off, uh, just uh, let me remind everyone. So please uh, uh, fill up the feedback form so that we'll get some inputs on uh, making our future programs even better. Thank you. Bye, Mr. Wait. Madhurma. Bye, bye everyone. We are logging okay. off now. Bye. bye.